What's up, y'all? This is not my first video for Instagram TV or YouTube, but is probably the one with the most production. And I think that actually works really well for what we're talking about today, which is how do I take pictures of celebrities? I think some of you recently have become friends of mine or followers because you've seen me taking photos with W. Kamau Bell or with Ludacris or Karamo or Hannibal Burris, And you look at them and you're like, man, it'd be so cool to meet these people and photograph them. But before I continue with anything else, I just want to say, as a photographer, you might shoot a celebrity, you might shoot a lot of celebrities, but they are not the barometer for your success. Your success as an artist is creating the vision you want and executing on it. The reason why we love celebrities so much is because they're recognizable faces and they are more tangible means for success than artists often have. So while although this video is supposed to be helpful, I just want a reminder, you're great just the way you are and keep making what you want to make. So let's get into it. What are the kind of tools to the trade to being good at taking photos of celebrities? Well, there's kind of three things. First of all, you want to be egoless. I know that's difficult. I'm a Leo. <laughs> no one really believes that I know how to do that. But what I mean isn't that you should be a pushover, but it's to understand that generally on shoots, as a photographer primarily, or the videographer or the director, you are the star. You say where people go, you say when things are going to happen, everyone waits on you. When there's, when there's a celebrity, that's no longer the case. You are simply a further cog in either the celebrity's vanity or more importantly, the mission that they're trying to kind of or the story they're trying to tell the world. Being egoless requires patience, observation, and a willingness to get up and be ready at any moment. Number two, know who's on the team. When you're, photogra when you're photographing a celebrity, especially for the first time, there'll be a lot of people that you're meeting and recognize that those folks are there to either help the celebrity do something or to help them stay on topic. So the more you can ingratiate yourself to these people, the more likely you are to have a good shoot. These are the folks that run schedules, so they might give you an extra minute, or they might tell you, hey, we have some downtime here. Those are the people that translate to this person who's very busy, hey, this person's worth being trusted. And lastly, be good in low light. It's really important to be quick with celebrities, um, with folks that have a lot of things pulling them in a lot of directions. It's important that you're efficient, professional, and often low light is what that leads to. So we'll talk about a couple tips here and there, but for the most part, this is a video about ethos, a little bit about Lightroom, but more importantly about how you should frame your thinking as you prepare yourself to be a great celebrity photographer. So let's do it. All right, so egoless, what does that mean? Um, it is not in the helpmate like church way. It is not in the volunteering way. You are doing your job, but you have to remember in your job, your job is to get an image. But here with a celebrity, it's a little bit different, right? Um, sometimes when you're photographing, folks come to you and they're so excited to work with you, they're excited about your vision. And some celebrities are like that, but there are also people, because they're busy or because they're huge, they kind of see you just as a cog in the wheel. So you have to prove to them that your vision is worthwhile, and that means being present and being egoless. You're probably looking for an example. This is the masculinity issue of Anxi Magazine. Anxi is a great magazine that talks about mental health. They hired me, I believe, in 2018 to photograph Karamo from Queer Eye. I'm sure you love the show, and if you don't, you should watch it. Um, for that issue, I had the pleasure of photographing Karamo. Already lost the page. <laughs> photographing Karamo for this. And some of you really liked the photo. It was my most liked Instagram photo. But what you don't know is what it took to get that image. So um, the photo editor reached out, shout out to Michelle, and she asked me if I would be interested in photographing um, someone in Kansas City. And I said, I've never been in Kansas City and it's kind of far. And she said, well, it's okay if you need someone else, but it's for Karamo for Queer Eye. And I was like, okay, sure. She had a small budget. I believe it was $500 or $1,000, something like that. And with that budget, I <laughs> bought a plane ticket to Philadelphia for, I think, $180 on American Airlines. And as you know, I live in New York, <laughs> so I took a bus from my apartment to the train, the R train, took the R train to the Amtrak, and then got a really cheap Amtrak ticket where I flew out of Philly, got the cheapest ticket I could, flew out at like 11 p.m., landed in Kansas City, rented a minivan, just the cheapest rental car I could get, drove to my friend Andre's house, and went to sleep. Then I woke up, and I had one day to photograph Karamo. 
I was so excited. I had been watching a show with my mom. It was kind of a cool moment for us. I think it's really important, especially in this issue and the work that he does, to talk about what masculinity looks like. And so I had gone through all these decks. I had been making mood boards, reaching out to people that live in Kansas City for about a week. But I was only in Kansas City for about 36 hours. Remember, I landed at about 1.30 in the morning. And I was leaving the next morning at like 6 a.m. So I get up early. I have a couple people that um, allow me to use their space. So there's a studio um, that's in this old factory building full of like washing machines. And then I also find this like sheep farm that my friend recommends. And I have this kind of cool image of him at sunset kind of shepherding these sheep um, over this hill. So I get up at, I got there at 1.30. I probably got up at 7 a.m. and I started scouting. I knew that I could start shooting Cromwell about noon. So I scouted from, I think, 8.30 in the morning until 11.30. I drove all around Kansas City, marked some places. It was supposed to be a you know, pretty beefy shoot, and I was really excited. And as you can see, it's a couple pages worth. And at around 11.30, his um, agent called me and said that they had a snafu while they were um, filming. And so he wouldn't be available until 6. The sun was setting at 7.30, and they expected us to also to shoot and interview him in this period of time. I was like, what? And it was a moment where I was kind of panicked and I was scared and I had already, you know, been running on a little bit of sleep and had flown all around and had some good barbecue, but was pretty freaked out. And I kind of had to just take a moment and take a deep breath and just remember that I came to do a job. And it really wasn't about what I thought about this person or if they thought it was cool, but it was just making sure that I took photos of someone that was vulnerable in an issue about masculinity. So what we ended up doing, insert screen record. What we ended up doing was um, I photographed Karamo in the very first place I checked. Um, if you look at this, and you'll see this in the screen record, but this is essentially just a floor of a warehouse building full of old washing machines and <laughs> stoves and stuff. and. I just found some areas that I thought were cool. So if we look through this right now, I'm using um, Adobe Lightroom. And as you know, Lightroom's great because it syncs across the phone, the iPad, the computer, desktop, etc. cetera. Um, but I photographed all these photos of Karamo, just so you know. I'll check this timestamp so you guys know, y'all know I'm not playing around. I photographed this at, it says 8 a.m. That's not what I took it. But if you go to the last image, Karamo, not if the person let me rent. And you'll see that I photographed that um, just a couple minutes later. And so I photographed Karamo for about 11 minutes. But because of my scout and what I thought I knew about kind of the image that he wanted, I was ready. And so the first thing you need to do as a celebrity photographer is like be egoless. That means have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C. Be aware if you're available light and be very flexible. Sometimes it's nothing personal. In this case, I believe they were still filming in Kansas City um, and things came up. And so on the list, I was not as important. Um, I wanna shout out to the writer of this. She did a great job. She interviewed him for about 45 minutes and then I had the last 15. And I moved him around and photographed him. You'll see that here to start out, my hands were a little shaky and I missed my focus a little bit. But as we move along, you'll see that I started to figure out how to shoot him in a really shallow depth of field. And then the image that ended up being the cover photo, you'll see the miss first. And then we got it here. And essentially what I was using is a little piece of glass to obfuscate the lens. So the thing I just want you to remember is as you start, whatever vision you have, practice it a lot so that in moments of high pressure, you can deliver. So second, our second tip, our second tool chest, hack, whatever you want to call it, is to be good in low light. What does that mean? If this is your very first time in photography, we're just going to do a quick little thing to explain something to you. Both these lenses are Canon 50 millimeters, but this one's massive and looks kind of like the eye of the Cyclops from Hercules. And this one's a little bit smaller, a little daintier, maybe the eye of a very gleeful person as they're seeing their love for the first time. So the difference is, the aperture that these two lenses have allows this one to be better in lower light. Now, 
This lens is super expensive. I think it's like $1,700 versus this one's $350. But there's also another 50 that's 50 millimeter that's about $110. So you saw how I showed you a couple photos from Karamo that were a little out of focus. One of the reasons, one of the problems with low light is that if you use autofocus, so remember manual focus, autofocus, if you use autofocus, your camera can have a hard time judging what you want to focus on, especially in low light. So to help with that, you can do a couple things. First, use your phone. Everybody has one. Use your flashlight. You don't have to shine it directly on the person. You have to be like, yeah, but even just at the side of them and then use your phone, I mean, use your phone's light and then use your camera's autofocus to pick up where they are and keep it locked there. If you have a little bit more money, you can use the Profoto C1 Plus. It's essentially a strobe um, that works with your phone, but you can turn it on and it acts as an additional light. And if you're photographing a lot of celebrities, it can be more professional. <laughs> so just like jam your phone in somebody's face, but this does cost more money. So if that's not something you want to do right now, you can hold off. This guy's pretty fun. You can put um, gels in it and different things like that, but it's great. You can even use it as a flash and you can turn down the intensity or turn it up. And that can help you because you can bounce off the wall. Um, you can use it above, just anything like that to just make sure that you have the right amount of light for your subject. So let's turn this off. So you can use those to help your autofocus. Second, the other thing you can do is just manual focus. Manual focus can help you because your eye knows better than your camera. Remember, a camera and a lens are designed to be just like the human eye, but unlike the human eye, it can't determine what's important. So sometimes it can help you to just move slowly and try your manual focus to get exactly what you want. Plus, manual focus is kind of fun and it's really nice to feel how tangible the photo is in your hands. So, now you've found your subject, you've lit them, you made sure that they're sharp enough. Something, a quick little thing I learned from Forrest Mankins um, is that this is an F1.4. This is an F1.2. As we went over, this is much more expensive, but Something Forrest said I thought was really fascinating was, sometimes we buy lenses and we go, oh wow, it can go all the way, all the way to f1.4? I'm gonna always shoot at 1.4. Sometimes what you wanna do is, this 1.2 is probably at its very sharpest at 1.4, and this 1.4 is probably at its very sharpest at 1.6 or 1.8. So sometimes you just wanna give yourself a little bit more leeway for your aperture, just so you don't miss their face like I did with Karamo. Because like I said, with celebrities, you often don't have a ton of time. So you have your tools, you have your light, you know to manual focus. What now? All right, so the meat of this is you got your light, you're prepared, you relaxed your ego, you've got your lenses, everyone's happy. Now you're there, or now you're a couple days to there. How do you make sure that you're ready to deliver? As I'm sure you know, I'm a deep believer in intimacy being a great tool as a photographer. But as you're shooting a celebrity, especially when you don't know, the likelihood that you can really know them deeply is really low. So this last topic is focused on paying attention to everyone that's there on the team. Why is that important? Well, celebrities, if they like you, they're going to work with you again. Stylists, um, set designers, producers directors, all these folks, if they do a good job, generally work with the same person again and again. And just like great basketball teams over time, you develop tendencies and chemistry. If you are a new photographer to this area, you want to learn about what settings, what moments, what things a celebrity likes so that you can do a good job. That works for whether you're shooting a cover for People Magazine or whether you're shooting stills for CNN. I've only done one of those two things, so I guess I can only talk to that, but I have shot for people. And first, when you're working with a team, a new team, you need to listen. You need to understand what the schedule normally like. If you can get there a day early or a couple hours early and just sit and observe, it'll really help you understand what the dynamics are. Someone might be the director, but the real decision maker might be the producer, the celebrity's wife, their friend. You need to make sure you take time to pay attention to all these people because no one's there on accident. And as you start to work with celebrities more and more, you'll realize the persona that we receive as consumers is one that is cultivated by many people. Beyonce is a great example of this. I've never shot Beyonce, but I can say that 
as she puts out so many beautiful things in the world, there are a lot of people that she trusts. And those people, their opinion is as valuable for you winning a great photo of Beyonce than Beyonce's opinion herself. So what does that look like? When I started shooting for United Shades of America with W. Kamau Bell, I was terrified. I really liked Kamau's show and I'd never shot stills before. I had flown um, all the way to Alabama, which I've never been to. I knew this episode was about him going back to his hometown. So I was pretty tense. I knew I had things I had to get done. I had CNN people telling me what they needed. I had people telling me he didn't like eye contact, all this stuff. And so the night I got there, I introduced myself when I got to the hotel and ran into him. And it was awkward because I think the producers thought I was a fan. And those first couple days were rough. I didn't listen as well. I ended up walking into one of the shots on accident. The director chewed me out and I left it feeling kind of crummy about myself. But now it's been four years. Um, and I can say definitively, one of the main reasons for that success is Dwayne. Dwayne Kennedy is one of the producers on the show, and from my first or second episodes I worked there, he always took time to have lunch with me and talk to me and kind of explain what the dynamics were. And so you've seen as you look through my work that I have a lot of photos of Kamau. Um, and those are because I understood that sometimes it wasn't time for me to take photos. Sometimes it was. And understanding what Kamau wanted started with understanding who he surrounded himself with. Second thing, be quick. What does that mean? It's more than like running in and running out. It means that you're spending time observing what's around you. You understand that if you have the two minutes to take this person's photo, whether it's for a cover or something else, um, that you understand what is around you and what light's available. Sometimes you could have a whole plan like I did for Karamo, and then it'll go out the window. And so you need to be ready and willing to be out of your comfort zone and be <laughs> comfortable with maybe not getting exactly what you want, but translating the vision to a degree. If you get the opportunity to shoot a celebrity more than once, your ability to work with their vision and yours gets more important. But for this first time, being as prepared as possible lets them know that you take their time seriously because they don't have a ton of it. After that, it requires listening more than you shoot. If you're listening on set, if you're listening on your calls ahead of time, if you're listening, if you're paying attention, if you're doing your research, you'll kind of know what works well for this person. If you can say, if they say, oh, I don't know how to pose and you say, you know, I spoke to your stylist, I looked at some old photos of you, and I think these are best. I think you want to avoid this. You're showing them a mastery and an understanding. And when you're in those positions, that confidence is key. And getting to speak to Ludacris after we filmed that video, I remember he said to me, I haven't looked at your work, but I really appreciated how comfortable you made me work when we were on the phone. And hopefully we get to work together again. But this video is kind of a long-winded way to say that this gear is important, these lights are important, I love my iPad, I love Lightroom, but the preparation comes and starts with you. And you shouldn't be nervous because if you've taken enough photos for a photo editor or um, an agency person to think you're the person for this job, just like Diddy said to Dana Scruggs, you're ready. All right, so these are actually the first photos I ever took for Kamau's show. Um, 2017, I flew to... Um, Mobile, Alabama, where I learned that that's where Mardi Gras started, which really blew my mind. This is the first good photo of Kamau I took. At this point, I was, I was so worried I wasn't going to be able to shoot many more because the director just yelled at me. I thought I was going to have to go home that day. But after introducing myself, he was already lit well. I got some nice bounce off the side of that building. So what I meant was, as we were filming, I thought to myself, oh, it's 11 a.m., the light's pretty, the sky's pretty high, but there is a nice white side of this. And so if I sit him down, I'm able to get some good bounce and that really aggressive light from um, the kind of that high noon sun won't be as bad. And so that preparation, I think, got me ready. Here's some other portraits I took along the way. They're just kind of okay. And <laughs> I kind of showed a commitment since Kamal's a funny guy to be funny <laughs> and try to find some things that showed his personality. And along the way, I also tried to show that I was there for the story and not just for him. I think that's something that's important about being egoless. You know in your mind that if you take a great photo of a celebrity, it'll put you on the map for more things. And they know that. But the cosign you're looking for <laughs> isn't earned easily. And if you're always chasing that clout, it will be far harder for you to receive. So when I was there, I tried to shoot other people. This is a photo of his cousin I took, his dad. I tried to shoot every photo like it was really important. And you'll see here even... Um, I shot this with a 35 millimeter. I actually photographed this in a Mark II. Fun fact about me, I just got a Mark IV a year or two ago, but I've shot with a Mark II for a long time. I love the colors, love the lights. 
any camera you use can work as long as you're prepared. And other thing, super important, I can't believe I forgot about this. When you're photographing a celebrity, well, sorry, I just shook the floor. When you're photographing a celebrity, if it's for a TV show or for a film, you have to make sure that you have a camera that is silent. Hear that? That's silence. No camera's all the way silent, but something that has an electronic shutter or a muffled shutter will allow you to photograph while filming is happening. So as much as I love my Mark IV, I don't use it for that. I actually use the Canon R6. It's quiet, it uses all my Canon lenses. Um, I've also used Sony's in the past, Fuji's. Everything is good, just make sure if you are filming for TV, that's something you wanna keep in mind. And then very lastly, take a dope photo so that they know, this is the biggest trick, take a photo that the celebrity sees and they think is cool, and I promise you, they'll have you back. Thank you.